Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So these are the type of live streams that I love to do. And the reason is, is because it's one of those days when things are just lining up. And it's actually a very positive day and a very bullish day. Now, yesterday, of course, a little bit of turbulence, right? We had uh, Binance step down. Looks like the Department of Justice came in and said, look, you're guilty of anti mundering uh, laws, and we're going to do a plea deal, and it's going to cost you and we were expecting some massive turmoil. But just as a recap, I know everybody knows these things because uh, they just can't get enough of this information. Uh, this is what actually happened. So, uh, of course, CZ Binance stepped down. CZ is going to have to pay $50 million, which is not a bad deal considering the fact that he is, I believe he is a, his net worth is over $10 billion. So drop in the bucket. This is the price of doing business. And uh, here we go. So the Binance broke U.S. anti-money laundering and sanction laws, failed to report more than 100,000 suspicious transactions with organizations. And I'm not here to defend or to say that's, you know, something that just goes above and beyond the Department of Justice. These are the real allegations. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not like these centralized exchanges are doing, uh, you know, the most perfect work of all time. They have moved the crypto uh, uh, market forward, but there was a cost to do that, and this is that cost. The exchange also never reported transactions with websites avoided selling child abuse materials, one of the largest recipients of ransomware, they said. So, again, take that with a grain of salt. Could be true, could not be true. It could be something they're talking about. Also, I will remind everybody that uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren just recently talked about in a, in a uh, House hearing committee where uh, there was nothing but of uh, funding for Hamas, the terrorist group, and it was all done by crypto and digital assets, and it is the most evil thing of all time. When in reality, we knew we know that cash is king for cartel and, of course, insurrectionists. So take that with a grain of salt. Binance made it easy for criminals to move their stolen funds and illicit proceeds on exchanges. They did just they didn't they did more than just fail to comply with federal law. It pretended to comply. All right, great. So that's what we got. Binance is going to pay $1.81 billion within 15 months and a further $2.51 billion forfeiture as part of the deal, prosecutors said. And then Janet Yellen actually came out and said this is the largest uh, fine that they've, they've ever put out uh, in U.S. history. So, uh, hey, we're making records all over the place. Fantastic. So we heard about this. CZ came in and said, yes, this is true. I'm going to step down. And we were expecting some major volatility. And, of course, I don't need to tell you this, but... Uh, didn't really do too much for the market in general. And this, I have to tell you, makes if this didn't crash the market for the allegations that were going on and for the CEO to step down and for the provisions that are going to come in, I don't know what's going to crash it because it's looking pretty damn good. And in 24 hours, Bitcoin went down a, a paltry 1.5%. And uh, at one point, I think it was at, uh, I want to say, 37.5, went down to 35.5. So it was like a $2,000 difference. Ethereum is actually up in 24 hours, up 2%. Uh, of course, BNB is down 12%. Not surprising. What is not surprising either is that the other uh, crypto tokens for different exchanges are also are also up because they're taking advantage of the situation. That's the market, baby. Solana's up. Solana's actually no, Solana's down. Excuse me, 12% for the week, but it had a massive run. Pullbacks are healthy. Not a big deal. 12%. If you're in traditional finance, you might have soiled yourself, but uh, 12% is a Wednesday here in crypto. Welcome to digital assets. Avalanche is down, Polygon, everything's down except for, like I said, Uniswap. Now that uh, Binance is out of the way, people are like, maybe we should look into decentralized exchanges. I'm telling you right now, Uniswap is great, but there's better deck, there's better DEXs out there by far. I just used Orca today. Well, this is like my second time using Orca. It's built on Solana. Man, super fast, super easy, super slick. Uh, OKB up 1.3% and so on and so forth. Kronos, uh, crypto.com token is up too, which is not surprising. Thorchain, 8% as well. Immutable X gaming token up three, four for Aave, Rocket Pool, I guess so. Uh, Celestia, which is what Crypto City has been talking about for quite some time, up uh, half a percentage point. And then down we go, Kava. And look at this one, Pyth is up almost 39%. In seven days, in the last, is this an hour? An hour, it's up 13%. Good news. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But that's all we have as far as uh, the market. This makes me extremely bullish because I could have sworn that we would have seen a lot more volatility, but we did not. And again, if that's not going to do it, what is? And there was different sentiment uh, across the cryptoverse. 
uh, from everybody thanking CZ, Dan Moorhead. Uh, you had Tom Crown actually, you know, putting in and said, hey, look, you've done an amazing job. And a lot of people said it like this is, you know, thanks so much for doing what you did. This is fantastic. But then you had some other ones like uh, Corey from Swan Bitcoin and also from Bob Lucas. Just put another video. I highly recommend you watch it. And he said, uh, now that the final crypto scammer of the 2018-22 cycle is prosecuted, it's time to legitimize the scamming. And uh, there is no shortage of opinions in here in crypto world, but that's what it is. But speaking of opinions that I think has to be fleshed out, Bitcoin ETF, because one of the big problems with this spot ETF is we all know it's Gary Gensler. And one of his big problems from what he says is manipulation. And a lot of people had said for quite some time that if uh, Binance was the largest centralized exchange in the world, it is four times the volume of its closest four competitors. Or it's, excuse me, it's more volume than four of its competitors globally. Then they're not going to allow it because there's too much manipulation that can actually be done with the price. True, you cannot manipulate Bitcoin itself. Mutable ledger, massive amount of nodes out there, massive amount of miners to actually work and, and secure the, the network. You can't do it that way, but you can manipulate the price. And that's what Gary Gensler supposedly has been an issue with. Now, with uh, this new piece coming out from the DOJ, maybe the ETF will be approved. So this is from John Reed Stark. And who is John Reed Stark? He is uh, from John Reed Stark Consulting, da, 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 Duke University. Great. But he's a former chief SEC Office of Internet Enforcement. And let me tell you, he loves him some SEC. Nothing wrong with that. I love my ex-employers too. But uh, he said right here, he goes, how the press has unsealed memorandum regarding plea proceedings of Binance and, and CZ, instituting a mammoth set of conditions and requirements. And I read through the whole thing. I linked in the description. You can check it out. It's like, uh, I don't know, 20 pages or something like that. But the one that's, that makes the, that really sticks out to me was number five. Defendant Binance will appoint an independent compliance monitor for a period of three years to ensure Binance's compliance with the terms of the plea agreement and report to the government. That's the U.S. government. And who do you think he's going to report to? He's going to report to the CFTC, probably the DOJ. And, of course, the SEC can listen in as well and, and of course, get all their, their, their documentation, which would satisfy, I think, what Gary's big problem was, which was the largest centralized exchange could be used to manipulate the price. And now that America has its grubby little fingers into it, maybe that's not the case. So that, to me, I had to sit back and go, man, maybe the thesis that I have that the ETF will not be approved, and it could actually very well not be approved or be approved because of this little piece right here. And also, on the same day, this is from Bitcoin News, definitely a follow of Bitcoin News.com over on uh, X or Twitter. And uh, here we are. Hester Pierce, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the commissioners comes out again and says, hey, because of what's happening behind the scenes, there's no reason for us to stand in the way of a spot Bitcoin ETF. Let me say it again. Hester Pierce, one of the commissioners of the SEC, one of the five, says there's no reason for us to stand in the way of a spot Bitcoin ETF. Now, before everybody gets super excited, she said this all the whole time. And I just want to put it in there just to reiterate that, you know, even though we look at the SEC as like some evil empire that's uh, screwing everything up, some of the things they're doing is actually on the level. And I, that's not a very popular opinion, but watch the video yesterday. I'll explain myself. But on this piece right here, Hester Pierce has never wavered from that stance. She says if you're going to approve a futures ETF, there's no reason why you shouldn't approve a spot Bitcoin ETF because it's the same pricing. And of course, you want to manipulate that. You can manipulate a futures ETF. You can manipulate a spot. It doesn't really matter. And this is one of those things that people say, well, now that, that of course, we have this, then the spot ETF is going to happen. I think I am more inclined to say that it actually will, but there's this little voice in my head. And you know I've been wrong on this channel. I think everybody knows that. Nobody's perfect, especially me. That's my wife. That joke never fails. And there's things like this. Who is Gary working for? Is Gary in the pocket of BlackRock and the money mongers that are out there and the asset managers that control this planet? Or is he in the pocket of, say, the White House and different senators? This is from Caitlin Long, and she posted this. 
from Custodia Bank, Wall Street veteran, and everybody knows her. She's a big Bitcoin believer. And she says, it. I didn't know this was actually a thing, but apparently it is. Truth revealed, Senator Elizabeth Warren, orchestration of Operation Choke Point 2.0, which if you're not familiar with that, that's where they try to shut down the banks that are dealing with the different centralized exchanges for, for crypto and digital assets to allow people to have it as an on and off ramp and shut them down. They did a beautiful job not more than six months ago. But she says, through her control over the Biden administration, the financial services appointee is really about rolling out a U.S. CBDC. I had no idea she was that big in the CBDCs. This has been an open secret in D.C. since January, but it's not a secret anymore. This is a minute long. It's important that you listen to this so you understand where Elizabeth Warren is coming from, where a lot of people, I think, are coming from that are in Congress right now because she's a bullhorn unfortunately, and that's just how it is. So just take a listen to this. You make the decision. Take a listen. Not that banks do wrong. If you think we could improve that in a digital world, the answer is sure you could. But in that case, let's do a central bank digital currency. Are you there? Oh, for a central bank digital currency? Yeah. Yes. I think it's time for us to so move So essentially, because we're, you know, the thing is when you look at it, every piece of paper currency we issue, mm -hmm. not with coins, but every paper currency has its own identity. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we're prepared for the blockchain now <laughs> with, with currency. Should that be how we build this? So I think of it as, again, what's the problem you're trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And if the problem you're trying to solve is fast, almost frictionless ability to send money across the country, do it rapidly, send it around the world be able to send it to your cousins in Argentina. If that's what you're trying to solve, a central bank digital currency does that. And you don't really need a stable coin for that. You've already got a dollar denominated. You don't really need a Bitcoin to be able to do that. So then the question becomes, so what is it that the Bitcoin, what problem is it solving for? And now we get into a very different space. The problem we're trying to solve is you. That's the thing. So when you hear things like this from Senator Elizabeth Warren, and you're going to hear this from other uh, congressmen and women senators, they're going to say the same thing, like maybe we should do a CBDC because that's the, the, the next big thing. That's what's going to push us over. That's them not understanding the whole system of what Bitcoin is here for. Bitcoin is here and digital assets, we'll just, we'll just stick with Bitcoin and make it simple right now, is to get out of the system. The way and the and in the manner in which inflation actually happens is the private tax that they do, printed by the U.S. Treasury, comes out to us, and it dilutes the value of the dollar over time. And that's what we're trying to get out of. That's the evil that she's talking about. But she thinks that a CBDC, which really is really no different than, I mean, it's essentially digital dollar. It's the same thing going over again in zeros and ones on a distributed ledger, which I don't think is going to be very distributed. So again, when you take a look at this, this is just one of those, it's just, first of all, you can say it's education, but it's not education. I think Elizabeth Warren knows exactly what she's talking about. And I think she knew exactly what she was talking about when she stood up on that congressional hill and she talked about how that uh, Bitcoin and digital assets were used to fund Hamas and terrorist attacks. And that is why we need to shut it down. When in actuality, when, it, when all the experts came out and said, no, they've been using banks like your buddies over at <laughs> Not that she's a big banker, she's not. But they've been using banks and cash is king if you're the cartel and you're a terrorist. So these types of things are the things that that stop me by saying, you know what, as far as like a spot Bitcoin ETF, it looks very positive. Could actually happen. It's a lot more assured that it could actually happen if we're able to monitor. We like I'm a part of the government to monitor Binance. But will it actually happen? Not when you have something like that. And I think that's one of the things. If they can get over that last boss, I think we'll see a Bitcoin ETF. And let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then uh, to finish up, oracles and Chainlink. Well, not this oracle, this oracle. This is called Pyth, Pyth.network. And I linked it in the description. And uh, the only reason I was interested in this, actually, is because there was a great video from... Uh, Paul Barone Network, and he put out about Solana airdrops. I'm like, ooh, airdrops, the fastest way to get scammed. Because let's be honest, when you do airdrops, everybody's clicking the wrong link and they're they're opening up their, their hot wall and they're getting screwed over, so whatever else. But I just wanted to watch it because I'm 
kind of interested in the space. And it was pretty interesting what they were doing as far as like an Oracle, how they were actually getting into and uh, uh, into these different chains. And it's built on Solana, which everybody seems to love right now, even though everybody hated it when it was nine bucks, but whatever. And uh, it's just a multi-chain asset that can be used on BNB, Optimism, Ethereum, Arbitrum, you name it. Uh, that's the Oracle for everybody. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So now I was just interested. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. An airdrop. Let me just check it out. And here's the here was the criteria. Because I'm like, I always feel like Oracle's, you need an Oracle. You need an Oracle. What it does is it pulls outside data, price action, any kind of data that you need in the real world into the blockchain. The blockchain can't just pull stuff out of the air. It needs help. It needs an Oracle. And Chainlink is why I've been buying it for the last two since I got into crypto. Actually, in 2018, 2019, when I started. And I've always liked this one. And I always said, well, this is the big one. But now with Pyth out there, and again, watch the video from Paul. He does a great job. It's, uh, it's making up ground. It's making up ground fast. So here's what's happening. An airdrop program we know in Web3, over 90,000 wallets will be eligible to receive Pyth tokens. Token tokens. Jeez, I sound like Janet Yellen. Pyth tokens based on their on-chain activity across 27 blockchains and 200 decentralized applications. Update, November 16th, the claim process for Pyth Network retrospective airdrops will open on Monday, November 20th, that's just two days ago, and remain open to eligible participants until February 18, 2024. Well, that's awesome, Rob. So how does this work out? Well, here's the criteria in DeFi, community member, blah, blah, blah. I linked this in the description so you can check it out. And I was like, hey, I'm going to check this out because this is the official link from Pyth.network from their official website. Let me see what's going on. Wah, wah. Sorry, loser, American. Uh, you're, unav you're unavailable for legal reasons. The site's not available for Congo, Korea, I can't even pronounce that. Luan's People's Republic, China, Ukraine, Ukraine, oh, okay. Cuba, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, South Syria, Syria, the USA, the UK, Yemen, Zimbabwe, and da da da. So I can't check it. And I'm not going to tell you to use a VPN because that is illegal and you should not do that. VPNs are dangerous. But if you want to use one, there's a link in the description. Anyhow, you should not do that to check for your airdrops, just saying. Uh, and then Pyth, just so you know, I thought it was pretty interesting because they're doing the airdrop and it just came out. It just like, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, 20th November, that was Monday when they did the airdrop. That was because you can't go back anymore. So it started out at 30 cents and uh, right now it's 43 cents. So just so you know, that might be something to look into. Now, the, the thing that will, that will put a monkey wrench in the total supply is 10 billion not a big deal you know uh but chain link is like 580 million but uh, then again cardano is like 45 billion so just uh, that will affect the price just so everybody knows but this is a very risky play it is an altcoin but i just thought it was very interesting i'm like oh another oracle that's out there fantastic so uh take that as you see fit now me personally uh i will not lead you astray i bought some today and you know how I bought it? Because I couldn't use an airdrop. I use Orca. And of course, if you, you're like, what the hell is that? Orca, and, and every one of these, these cryptos that are out there, anyone that you want to get into, and of course, you have to do your own research as much as you possibly can. Not that you're going to get it right every time. That's the thing with investing. Remember, I put rules for a reason underneath me. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. It's all gone, right? Everything is scammed up from otherwise. Don't leave things on exchanges, da-da-da. So here, if I'm over on uh, CoinGecko, if I click on markets, I can see all the different centralized and decentralized exchanges that this is available on. There's this one called Orca. Orca is run on Solana. I used it, and I got to tell you, super impressed. And I, I tweeted that out very fast, very easy. The fees were nominal, I mean, next to nothing, which is a huge difference between that and, say, using like a Uniswap for the Ethereum gas fees. I mean, just unbelievable. And of course, I had to transfer some Solana into my Phantom wallet to because it integrates with my Phantom wallet, which is Solana wallet. And it took less than 10 seconds to transfer it over. Now, Ethereum, eh, you never know. And it's going to cost, a, It's. It, I'll just say this, it's very simple. So check out Pyth. I bought some. So if you think, oh, Rob's just a nice guy talking about some crypto. No, Rob owns it. And Rob is biased. All right. 
And uh, that's it. So for that piece, and then also uh, a little bit of jarring news to wake everybody up and remind everybody of this. Uh, Justin Sun, founder of Tron, put out a tweet about four hours ago and said, HTX and uh, Heco cross chain bridge underwent a hacker attack. HTX will fully compensate for HTX's hot wallet losses. So another exchange goes down. Well, excuse me, it doesn't go down, just their, just their hot wallet. But this is the second one that he's been involved in where it's had a hack. Deposits and withdrawals temporarily suspended. All funds in HTX are secure and the community can rest assured we are investigating the specific reasons for the hacker. And I think, let me see here. Once we complete the investigation and identify the cause, we will resume services. Now, to be fair, Justin Sun did say that he is going to personally, not even personally, but the business itself, is going to refund everybody if, they, if there's any loss of funds. But he said that before on the other centralized exchange that he was a part of. I, I forgot the name of it. Correct me in the comment section. But again, these are the things that worry me. And it, it doesn't worry me because I got it figured out, I think. I made these rules, remember, for a reason. See that, that third rule, rule number three. No exchanges. You have to use the exchanges to be an off and an on-ramp, right? But you don't have to leave it there. You paid the fees, now take it off. So did we not learn a lesson from Mt. Gox? I know I didn't because I put stuff on Voyager and Celsius. Did we not learn our lesson from Voyager and Celsius and FTX and BlockFi? Well, apparently not, and that's just how it is. I understand some people have to leave crypto on the exchanges because they're trading, they're doing all the, the things they're doing. But you don't have to leave it on there. You can take it off, put it in cold storage wallet. I've made plenty of videos. There's a great website called Dan Teaches Crypto. It shows you how to do it for free. So I just want you to, to be safe. That's it. I don't want to keep hearing these, these, these stories about, oh, I got screwed over and I left it all on the exchange. Why did anybody tell me? I don't have to. 90% of you are sick of hearing this message. But the 10%, I think you need to hear this. And this is, and the reason is because if you're going to work this hard, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep, right? In that vein, people will say, well, what's a good cold storage wallet? I use this one. I use Tangem. I use Ledger and I use Elipal because I'm going to diversify in my portfolio. I'm going to diversify my cold storage wallets, right? But so far, since this one was created in Tangem in 2018, no hacks. Ledger, no hacks. Elipal, no hacks. Now, to be fair, Ledger did have personal data hacks, but that's what every website has essentially. But there's been no hacks of your crypto. So people have been asking me like, Rob, I only got so much money. How do I do this? Well, Tangem itself, let me show you. For a three card set, it's 62 bucks. For two cards, it's under 50 bucks. And I did a video, links in the description. I show you how to set it up. And, there, and then these... These tangent wallets now, the ones that I have this, Jesus Christ, Christmas. I have this one right here, which is the old, the old version. But the ones that you're going to get are these new versions right here. I just got, an, I got the new set. And what those do, those allow you to either put the private keys within the card itself or the private keys that you can generate a mnemonic phrase and write down on a piece of paper. It's whatever you want to do now. It's whatever you want to do. It gives you both options. I personally have them all in the cards, and that's it. But as a comparison, just so you know, if you're looking for a cold storage wallet, uh, this is the Black Friday offer for Ledger. I do not have a link to Ledger, but it's shop.ledger.com. The price is 79 bucks for the old version, 150 for uh, the newer version, and then the Nano Duo is 228, where you get two, a twofer. So those are the price differences. I use all, I use both or all three with the Ellie Pal, and uh, to make things crystal clear. Uh, Tangem is not a sponsor of my sh of my show. They are not. They didn't pay me to say this. However, that's an affiliate link. If you can't stand using affiliate links, you get ten percent off. Just go to shop or Tangem. What is it? Tangem.com. And hopefully, you go to the right place. But if you want to support that, there it is, right there. And that's it for today. So look, that's it for today and the news and what's going on. I think it's super bullish. I mean, I haven't been this bullish in quite some time. And this, I didn't think we were going to get here until we got into uh, Bitcoin having territory. And we're only like four and a half months away. So I think this is pretty good timing. We'll see how everything works out with macro, but that's it for the news. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. 
as things accelerate, and they will accelerate very quickly, it's important that you stay up to date. I don't care if it's me or somebody else, just subscribe to somebody, watch the news, see what's happening, so you can make the best decision for you and your family. That's it.